Staffy, though, talk to us. I can see you're bubbling. You're bubbling, he's Staffy. He's, ha he's happy. He's happy right now. He's I'm happy because he gets the sounds right. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to look, 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 look at Staffy that he's not look at these guys. Guys. I wouldn't do you like that anymore, Staffy. I'm look, sorry. Look, look, look at these guys. These are the same guys that call me negative for saying everything that I have seen before this game even happened. There's no difference. What I'm about to say is no different than the preseason games. I told you guys, the game being a preseason game or being an official game does not mean anything. Not because the game is official, all of a sudden, this midfield is going to find chemistry and they're going to work together and they're going to pass the ball well. But the things that I called out, it was mainly the midfield. I can ignore all my agendas for now and just talk about this midfield. Everything that I've said after the Madrid game and the Dortmund game is the same thing. You can just replay that and put it for today's watch along and I'll just dip and it will still make sense. Because I said Casemiro is left on an island alone. He's not a ball passing uh, um, DM. He's not Rodri. He's not, uh, he's not um, um, what's his name? Thomas Partey. He can't break the lines with his passing. He doesn't progress the ball well. He cannot be left alone. Prime Casemiro had uh, Modric and Cruz holding his hand because his main attribute is destroying. He can destroy and he can pass within range. When you put him alone and he has to find Mount, and he has to find uh, um, Bruno, who are far from him, he doesn't do that well. I actually feel bad for him because the criticism I'm about to give him is not actually his fault. They're misusing him. You're asking a fish to climb a tree. If a fish can't climb a tree, it's not the fish's fault. It's my fault for giving it instructions that it can't do. If I asked the, the fish to swim, it would have been perfect. If I asked Casemiro to stay back and destroy, he'll be perfect. But who's holding his hand? No one. You know how many touches on the ball uh, Mount had today? 30 touches. Our goalkeeper had 18 more touches than him, and he played 68 minutes of football. That just shows you how far the lines are between our midfielders. And then you have Bruno having to drop deep. Bruno dropping deep is so useless. Listen, we can sit here and talk about the pass that he did to Wan-Bissaka. That was a good pass. I celebrated that pass. I celebrated the Wan-Bissaka assist. I celebrated the goal. But it was that quick for me to switch off because I celebrated the goal, and then I'm back to reality. The reality is this midfield is not going to work. And I don't care that's the first game because I said it also in preseason. And everyone's like, oh, it's preseason, it's preseason. It does not matter what the type of game it is. It doesn't matter who we're facing. The personnel that we have in this midfield is not going to work. We are misprofiling some of these players. They're all collectively going to look horrible, but they're not actually that bad of players. Bruno can look better in a, di a different midfield. Matt would look better in a different midfield. And Casemiro would look better in a different midfield. Casemiro is going to get found out this season, unfortunately, because he's being used wrong. The minute Erickson stopped playing next to him and progressing the ball, because we all remember last season, Erickson used to drop deeper, collect the ball, and move up the pitch with the ball, whether it's him and Casemiro. Casemiro didn't have to do it a lot. Casemiro gave up the ball today 17 times. 17 times he lost possession. You understand how big that stat is? If you look up uh, uh, the other DMs from other top six players, I promise you, they're not giving up the ball 17 times, especially the, the, with the type of passing that he's making. The only player that gave up the ball more than him was Matias Nunez from Wolves, and that guy's an attacking midfielder. So it's actually understandable why he loses the ball more. So this midfield is not going to work. It, it, the, the, the type of game, it's not gonna, it, it, it doesn't even matter what type of game that we, we're, we're going to be playing because whether it's Champions League, Premier League, friendly games, they can be playing against me, KJ, and, and Cam in five aside. This team is not functioned right. We have good individuals, but together they don't make sense. You've never Bru seen uh, uh, <laughs> Mount can't be that high up the pitch. And don't even get me started on Garnacho because when I say this guy's not ready to play 90 minutes, people think, oh, I'm just I'm just hating on him, this and that. I keep talking about Sancho, and Terry himself called me a Sancho fanboy here so many times just because I am naming our best link-up player up front. No one links up the, the, the front line better than him. The minute he came on, him and Ericsson, we stopped rushing the ball. We stopped whipping in the ball every time like Bruno did. We actually took time on our decisions. They didn't directly get involved in the goal, but they changed the game for us. Because the minute, when did we score after they came on? Within like the first, what, 10, 15 minutes? So that's the impact that we had. We can have a combination of players that are good on the ball and players that are good off the ball. But we can't all have all the players at once playing, the players that rush decisions. Garnacho likes to take on men, uh, uh, on his men. Rashford, the same thing. Anthony's decision-making is not the best. Um, Bruno likes to whip in the ball all the time. Bruno, uh, uh, Mount is just non-existent. And Casemiro is not a good passer. All these guys don't complement each other. You bring in one guy that can link up the play, and we score a goal. But apparently, so, I'm so, just a so, fanboy. So, so, no, so this is the thing, though, Staffy. What I'm going to say, though, is that you, it's, it's sometimes like what you're doing is let's not act. And this is... 
no disrespect to Sancho, but let's not act like he hasn't started many, many games and done nothing for us as well. The the problem I have with what you're saying, everything you've said about the team tonight, I, I agree with large parts of it. We were poor. Garnacho may not be ready to start, but he's not going to become ready to start without starting. You you need to get that that balance right. But and I, by the way, I praised Sancho right at the beginning of the video. I thought he was actually our best player tonight. I but, missed the start, so I, I actually don't yeah, yeah, know what yeah. you said. I, I I'm not taking it to get you back. Let, let us not come out and act like every time Sancho plays, he's our best link-up player and best attacker. Because no, he's for two not. Years, so so I, I get where you're coming from. Like I've seen many a game where we've looked this bad with Sancho on the pitch as well. But he was our this best is... man in preseason, Terry. And you saw him no, in this mate, new so, position. So, so I, he so, wasn't so, in this position. Hang on, hang on. Let me finish. Let me finish. So us calling you a fanboy last year, was when you were defending you him for having bad games, right? Tonight, I agree. I actually think he should have started as the false nine with Rashford. On. Look, Rashford, if you actually just look at Liverpool's attack, City's attack, Arsenal's attack over the last two to three years, become solid and potent because their players all generally play in the same position week in, week out. We are still with Rashford as he hits his mid-20s, chopping and changing where we play that lad. And that isn't fair. There's a handful of players through the last 20 years of football. Bow was okay at it. Ronaldo was Ronaldo and Messi, the only two I can really think of. That whether they were playing left, right, or central, they were top class. Most players, they have one position where they are consistently good as an attacker, and that is it. And for me, that was a mistake from the manager tonight. So I, I definitely agree with you on that, my friend. Um, and, and I actually think that... Um, uh, I, I actually think you're right. I, I'd like to see Sancho start the next game. Thought he was very, very good when he came on. He looks, he actually looks fit and hungry. And it's interesting that he had one of the longest preseasons out of all of our players, and he had actually extra game time. Uh, Dizzy's with us as well. We'll come back to you in a minute, Staffy. You make, you make some great points there, my friend. Um, uh, do you agree with where Staffy's coming from? Do you think this midfield can never work, or is it about giving them time together to create that that chemistry and relationships? Bro, only at United, only at United can you win your first game of the season and the world feel like it's melting down, bro. <laughs> what, what is actually going on? It makes no sense. Yes, we played dog. We played dog shit. That's a fact. Mm, the midfield can't work because we have a six and two tens. Mason Mount and, and Fernandez can't work together. I think it's got to be one or the other. I think if it was a com competition for places for, for, for one place, between them, I think we have a we have a recipe to do something. But if it's both of them on the pitch, they're both looking for the Hollywood pass. They're both looking to run in behind. They're both looking to 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 make a killer pass, and none of them are looking to pick up the ball and carry it. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it can work really. I think I like like Staffy said, Sancho was our best ball carrier when he came on. I think we looked so much better with him than without him. I think he should have started anyway. I think Garnacho, whilst he was positive in the first 10, 15 minutes, he looked like he was trying to make something happen to prove a point, to kind of emphasize that he's arrived kind of thing. And he's just, it just wasn't, it just not that just yet. He needs to, he, I think he still needs to develop the calmness in his game that like he has, he has the erratic last minute. We need to go get a goal. Let's go do it. He has that. That's calm. That's fine. But the calm, collected, let me pick up, let me pass, let me move. I don't think he's got that just yet. So I think, I don't think he's a starter. Um, Rashford definitely, like you said, Terry, has to be on the left. I can't, I can't be dealing with this. Let's find his best position. I just can't do it. He signed a new long-term contract. He's our best, he's our best player as far as forwards go. And realistically, the best players in your team have one guaranteed position, regardless of who's fit and who's not. They play in that position. That's just what your best players do, and yeah, that's that really. I don't know. It's just it's just a bit mad. But week one in it, three points. We move on. <laughs> just a quote from Gary Neville when he was asked a question about Man United's midfield tonight. He says, "Let's be honest with you. After tonight, I want I want them to go out and get Caicedo and Lavia. Um, <laughs> go and get them off Chelsea. It will cost 170 million, but it'll be worth it." And it's about finding the right combination. Listen, I've been saying for a while, people ask me where Amrabat will play. I think you put Amrabat in the... Listen, I don't care about the 65 million, 50 million pound thing. You buy, bring Amrabat and you put him next to Casemiro. Tonight doesn't happen. The midfield doesn't get run through and it, and it changes things and, and everything else. I'm, I'm going to go through some more super chats. I want to go through the panel. There's so many of them. I want to respect the viewers so much. It's amazing to see so many of you here. Please hit like buttons as well. Uh, for them to say it's not a penalty is outrageous. If the defender committed the same offense, it would have been a 
uh, considered a penalty outside the box. It's a foul. Like Staffy, what did you make of that? Did you think it was a penalty, bro? You're on mute, G. It's not a penalty, actually. Yeah, I, for I forgot to talk about that. It's not a penalty. KJ said it perfectly. Both players went for the ball, and both of them mis miscalculated it, and no one got the ball. I get, I get it. Yes, Unana is going in with a little bit extra, you know, what do you say? Like, he, he, he's coming in crazy at him, you know, like a little bit more, like, momentum. So he collides with him, yes, and he drops him. I get what you're saying. But to be honest, I've seen this in court so many times where defenders go up and try to hit the ball, not everyone gets the ball. They collide. Sometimes, sometimes they drop. Sometimes they don't. And it's never a penalty. It's just overemphasized the goalkeeper. If his gloves kind of touched his face, I would 100% say, yeah, this is a penalty. But he noticed at some point he's not going to get the ball. So he, he, he technically pulls out and he just goes up with his arms like this. He can't stop his momentum when he's in the air already. You know, but there's nothing. And they said it, even Tim Howard said it. He said it's it's a it's a not a clear and obvious error. So that's why VR couldn't return it. There's nothing clear about it. He didn't hit him in the face. He didn't punch him in the face. So there's nothing to give that. All I'm saying Aaron. is because he was Onana and everyone is looking for, for a mistake. Mistakes, yeah, yeah. Everyone's looking for Onana because he replaced the hair and he's a ball playing goalkeeper. And there's another reason why they're looking for it. But they're looking for the mistake to say Onana did this. This is why he, we shouldn't have bought him. This is why the hair should have stayed. That's what it is. If this was, I'm telling you, if the hair had the balls to actually try that, no one, no one's saying it's a pen on the hair. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I hear you. Not a proof um, he can save shots just like the David the hair tonight too. Like you gotta give him props on that. Yeah, like I, I was gonna ask you all, like, what did you, it's, uh, Hannah, what did you make of Onana's debut at Old Trafford under the lights? I thought it was really impressive. Obviously, that last minute was a little bit tense. Like. I hope this isn't a penalty just for his sake. I think it was a penalty. Anyway, I'll let that one go. Um, I thought Onana was really good. It's clearly the way that Eric Ten Hag wants to play. I think looking at the Brighton and the Brentford game at the start of last season, don't really want to talk about that, but I think those two games, the first two games of last season was where he tried to do that and it didn't work because everyone knows De Gea just was not that guy. He wasn't that goalkeeper. And I think... Replacing De Gea, it was a big statement. It was needed to be done. And I'm so glad that he did. I think Onana supports with the players well. He seems to have quite a good relationship with them on the pitch, which is important. Everyone used to just shout at De Gea and it was clearly such a breakdown in communication. So it's nice to see a lot more of a team. Maybe not tonight, but I think Onana looks really promising. I'm, I'm, I think it's probably our best sign in this summer. Yeah. 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 I'll say this though. I'll say this though. I think, honestly, I think our distribution might not have been De Gea's fault. I think we might have to go back and just apologise a little bit. Because it got to a point where Nana was trying to play with these men and then he was like, you know what, long ball. And then the long balls weren't sticking because Rashford is not holding that. Did you, did you see how, how many times he went for long balls? In the second half, it was all long balls. And I was like, yeah. this is definitely an instruction from Ten Hag because he never goes that long. Well, Bro, even, even, I, even I said was, this. Dizzy, I said that. I was like, there's no point of changing the goalkeeper when we don't change the 11 and everyone's good on the ball. We have a DM. As much as I love him, he is shit on the ball. He's not going to He's not gonna improve all, the, all of a sudden at 30, 31 years old, and he's going to become a Rodri who knows how to pass or a parte. And I'm going to say this on live right now because I said it in the chat and Cam thought I was crazy. If anyone from Saudi Arabia is watching this stream, please put in a bid from Casemiro because I would rather sell Whoa. him for any money this summer before not. I promise you, I promise you, before next summer, we're going to be screaming for him, out, for him out. I promise you. So I would rather sell him right now for some value. Yeah, Saudi, Saudi, Saudi has the money. Send some money right now. We'll give you this. Yeah. this no, 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 no. Like, I hear you. Hold on. Hold on. I hear you and all. I hear what you're saying. Go get value. But the whole point of bringing in an Amrabat or somebody who can step in for him is that you still have a player like Casemiro, who is a leader, who oh, when he gets some rest in his legs, will be fine. Like, listen, he had a bad game, but that's a like that's Bro, crazy. This is not a this on this Casemiro. Is this is what I want you to understand. He's not. No, no, no. To be, stop, stop you. I get, I get your point. And to be fair, I don't. next summer, I swear, uh, he's on his last year of his contract. No, so we would be starting to transition out of Casemiro. Anyway. anyway, so I don't think it's so sell summer. him now and give me money, <laughs> and maybe we can go get you a many before the summer. Listen, I, 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 go you, get you a many. Are you nuts? You could, you, we're not going to get you a many. No, we're not selling them. This, this is the thing. I get where you're coming from, Staffy, but you're throwing baby out with the bathwater after one game. 
No, but no, I, I promise you it's not because of the game. I would have told you that in preseason. You know why yeah. I couldn't say it in preseason? Because I would have been looked at even more crazy if I said it in preseason. I said, Cam, Cam, you so remember. Game one changes. Yeah, game one now. No, no, I waited for the season to yeah. start. I just wanted the season to start so I could say like it. He's been sitting there for like three months waiting to say it. First bad performance. He goes, oh my God, I get it on match day one. Yeah, I think, again, I think you're writing him off too quickly.